Good day. I wraps in with your Spider ETF video for this Monday, the 13th of April, 2020, and we're getting on out about 6.30 in the uh, evening. And I am late in part. I was watching the president talk and today's uh, update, I guess that's what you call it, is daily updates with the press, is going on for an hour. Everybody's been on. I mean everybody. So I, I have to digest what it all means. But as we take a look at what's going on, it's a mix C today. A lot of red, a lot of green, no one way. And that's something I often look to see what's going on. As we come to the technology spider, you can see how the market's been working its way back up. The pattern is bullish because you have higher lows and higher highs from over here. The market's been over the 18-day average of closes, so the bias has been up. And that's how I determine bias, is the market up above the 18-day average on a closing basis or under it. Now, intraday, you can also look at it tick by tick, but I like to do it on a close. Where's the battle? You see it. It's the 200-day moving average. Uh, if the market clears that, then the 100-day. So we'll see what that does. If you get back under 83 and a quarter, then you break this rally, and I'd be looking to see if prices fall back to the 18-day average of closes. In terms of Bollinger Bands, you got up to them last Last week, you're trying to get up to them again, fell back a little today. As I said, that's a lot of resistance. If you looked last week with me, the combination of 100 day average and uh, 200 day average, I'm sorry, and Bollinger Bands is an important resistance point. When we look at momentum out of the slow stochastics, it is overbought. It's that simple. I have an overbought market. Both numbers are over 80, but only the first day so, into a heavy resistance point. When we come to the U.S. Semiconductor 25 index called SMH, we've had a pattern of what? Coming up. Then we broke through this other day, this low. So we have a higher high, lower low pattern. That's not a trend. You're fighting the battle at the 200-day average to the upper Bollinger Band, and you're also here in a pattern that's interesting. Both numbers today closed over 80. If we go back to Thursday, both were over 80. Remember, we weren't open for a Good Friday. The day before, they weren't. Tomorrow's a real important day. Are we going to get what's called embedding? Embedding means uh, if you do three days in a row where both numbers in the slow stochastic are above 80, they're embedded, below 20 three days in a row, they're embedded. And that shifts the scale when you get a bullish embedded reading to me saying that I expect breaks in the market, uh, not deep ones either, to be very, very well supported in the marketplace looking for higher highs. You don't have that pattern in the industrial sector. You're just overbought, in an uptrend. The market tried on, uh, that's Thursday, to get up to the upper bowl and Japan slip back a little bit today. Trend those still up unless you take out 60-43. The energy sector, I think this acted poorly today. I mean, here you are, President Trump, I did hear as I was turning off my, my studio to do one thing, in other words, get into another video, and he's still talking that he thinks it'll be closer to a 20 million barrel a day cut. We'll see. First of all, saying that you're going to cut is one thing. The math of the cut's always interesting. Is the Saudi number from the 12 million barrels they went to at the beginning of April or the 10 they were doing prior to that? You tell me. Then compliance. Who's complying with it? How are they getting at these numbers? How much is he taking of U.S. production that, remember, the president cannot order oil producers not to produce? That's an antitrust violation. But he's, he will count American cuts as happening because of price. Well, we know that is true. The law of economics will, will get rid of anything that's expensive. If you can't make money at it, you stop making it. That's the law of economics. But here we are with a market that is running into resistance at that upper Bollinger Band. QQQ, well, the leaders are the FANG stocks. They were the performers today. They carried the market. Uh, Netflix up, last I looked, was up 7% or so. Amazon up. The others were not down very much. So the FANGs were doing pretty darn good here. Uh, you're in an uptrend. This market's trying to stay above the a 200 day average and it's trying to poke and keep running against that upper Bollinger Band. I don't think it'll be able to stay over it very much, but it's able to push on it. So trend up, bias up, momentum, well, overbought. You're not embedded yet. 
As we get to the emerging market ETF, same trend, higher lows, higher highs, overbought, hasn't been able to get to a Bollinger Band. You break this if you get under 5360. In GLD, I think the world has woken up to understand that currencies are getting debased around the world. And what I mean by that is that whenever you're trying to pull out of this COVID-19, the newest event, and the world central banks are rushing to the helps of their economy, which they should be doing, that's what they're there for, stability in some manner, uh, where's the money coming from? How's the money brought back, if ever? Uh, where's the forgiveness? Well, let's assume there is a lot of forgiveness. You don't owe the money. Well, you're flooding the market with money. So what do people do? They run to the precious metal sector. And I think gold is seeing that coming into it. Gold miners, well, if I own a gold mine and I have a mine that's gonna produce this year, oh, a million ounces, just making a number up for you. Uh, and it was, Six months ago, $1,300, now it's $1,750 an ounce. Well, that mine's worth a lot more money. Are, are people not gonna pay attention to that? So that helps you with that part. TLT 20, 20 plus years. I, the bond market is rolling on futures to the downside, which means rates went up. Now, that helps the stock market. You know, the only reason that rates went as low as they did is there was panic in the market. We're also seeing the Fed come out today and with the repo facility, and this was New York Fed, came out and said, we don't have to do two operations a day. We can go to one because the market's much more stable. So we are losing some of that panic. And remember, the Fed's moves were meant to make central bankers not have to fight for dollars. And since the Fed did that, the dollar's been falling down. The Fed is winning that battle as well. The Fed wins a lot of battles. You don't want to battle them. You've got higher lows, higher highs in the euro currency, trend up, momentum up. I think the trade's a, a buyer in this market around the 103 area. Now the question is they don't want it under 102.60, otherwise the market starts getting away from them. I wanna remind you, Modern Trader, we have all these different brochures that are so neat. If you go to our website under free offers, we've got plenty of free offers galore there. Take a look at what we offer. I think you'll find it interesting. This one was profitable trading strategies in any market. We've got others with many rules. They teach you uh, all the different indicators, a lot to be learned there. I'm Ira Epstein, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.